Hi, I'm Danny Gasparini, and welcome to this segment of Penn Voice. I am joined today by Pastor Dave Sheeran, who is a pastor with Street Life Ministries. Yes. Pastor Dave, thanks for um, coming here and telling us about Street Life Ministries. So why don't you just jump in and tell us about some of the work that you do? Yeah, thank you so much for inviting me to be a part of this. And uh, so what we do is, is we serve the homeless population here up and down the peninsula. We uh, have uh, three locations, four nights a week, where we meet outside, and it's a nighttime ministry. We start around 7 p.m., and uh, we're a church. We, we have a church service. We have a, a hot meal. Um, we do outreach uh, e on each location. Um, yeah, we have sleeping bags, backpacks, clothes, socks, underwear, and our whole, our whole mission is basically just to become friends with the people that live on the street. Mm -hmm. When they come and, you know, like most anybody comes to your house when you have a hot meal, um, you tend to kind of relax, you feel a little bit more comfortable, right. and that allows us to then kind of go into outreach mode, you know, and start to really learn what's going on, why are, are certain people homeless? You know, everybody's different. Right. You know, it's mental illness, drug addiction, just hit some wrong, hard times, age, it, you know, everything's so much different. So we're just really trying to um, learn the heartbeat of our folks so we can find ways to help them out. And then how long have you been with Street Life Ministries and, and how did you become a pastor? Yeah, so I've been a part of the ministry 11, 12 years. Um, I went through Salvation Army uh, years ago. I was a, I was an addict, I was drug, addicted to drugs, methamphetamines, living on the street, I was homeless, robbing, stealing, you know, just the, you know, you name it, that's what I was, I was right. doing. I ended up in a situation where I ended up in front of a judge in San Jose and he gave me the, the, the choice to either go to prison or go to a rehab. So I went to rehab and that's where my whole life completely turned around. Left uh, the, the, the program uh, when it was time to leave and ended up at Menlo Church Presbyterian mm -hmm. in uh, Menlo Park. And uh, there I started meeting people who God put around me and kind of started helping form and shape my whole new life because it was a whole new life from what I had been living for years. And uh, it was around 2007, 2008. Um, I don't know if you remember when the economy completely right. fell apart. And um, I was caught up in that. I lost my job and was laid off, went to my sponsor in AA crying, said that God forgot about me, didn't love me anymore. and. He kind of looked at me and, and I thought he was going to give me a big hug and tell me everything was going to be okay. And he just told me, he says, you know what you need to do is you need to go and serve. And I know about a ministry down the street at the Menlo Park train station that serves the homeless. You need to go there and you just need to get grateful and just kind of, you know, get your bearings. And I went down to street church and never left. And that, and that changed everything. Completely. You know, yeah. um, one of the things that I, I should make sure our viewers know that um, when you do these uh, ministry nights, um, in the various communities that you talk about, you do need volunteers um, to come and help and you do need donations and of all of the food and all of the clothing and things you hand out. So we just wanna make sure that if anybody's watching um, that we, you do know that we, we need your service. Yeah, absolutely, um, absolutely. Time, treasure and love and yeah. prayers. So um, we'll make sure that people know where they can go if they yeah. too can serve and give of their time and of some of their treasures to, yes. to help folks. But um, so, so tell me, what are, what are some of the, the stories that you hear that, that you know you've changed that individual's life? Because I imagine today, it's, it's now 2019, um, we've pushed a lot of people into homelessness yeah. um, that probably never in a million years woke up one day and thought that they would find themselves there. So, sure. And, and, the, and the gambit is very complex to, as you said, addiction all the way through hard times. So how do you really dive into that and, and, and make a difference? Yeah. Part of the new generation of homelessness that's kind of coming out right now, mm -hmm. we're actually really trying to learn and trying to adapt to it and trying to figure out where it comes to the high rents um, and jobs that people can't get because of education or uh, criminal backgrounds. Um, so it's really new. So we're, we're still trying to figure that, this whole new shift right. of, of homelessness out. And I think but the reason why I was saying that is because at some point in time, the tent on the street, you're gonna overgrow it, um, yes. unfortunately. Yep. And so you're gonna need, I think, a step further. And you and I were chatting about it, a place of your own, training programs, yes. those kinds of things. So tell us about what you think 
for the future. Yeah, so what we're trying to do right now is, is we've decided, or we've we prayed about it, and we, as a team, came, came up with an idea that um, we're, we, we're looking for a building. Uh, we need financial support. We're, we're gonna be doing an, uh, a campaign uh, to start raising money towards having our own building. Um, we're looking at a couple different avenues, but what we wanna do there is have a corporate office, a central location. We're trying to find something that's as close to El Camino uh, that we can get, so it's, it's very accessible to the homeless that come up and down the peninsula. As you know, a lot of people who live on the street, they ride the bus, they ride the train, they, they walk a lot. So El Camino area would be perfect for us. Uh, but what we want to do is we want to have classrooms. Um, a lot of our folks need to be retrained to become productive members of society. They've kind of, they've just lost their way. Um, all the way to being able to uh, deal with public. Uh, like if we uh, were to work on, one of our ideas is have a culinary school. Uh, we work, we're uh, kind of connected to the San Mateo County Sheriff's Department right, right. now. The new jail has an awesome right. culinary school. So I uh, connected with Melissa, who's the director of that, and um, went and did a, a, a viewing of it. Mm -hmm. Love their program. Right. So we were talking to her about what it looks like with some of their inmates that are in transitional that need to uh, require uh, service hours to train. <laughs> coming to us and helping us train our homeless um, to become uh, chefs, culinary school kind of uh, graduates, and um, looking at janitorial service companies and landscaping, uh, computer classes, science classes, you know, reading classes, mm -hmm. um, looking at like, um, not, uh, not necessarily a Toastmasters, but something like a Toastmasters right. to teach our folks, how do, I, how do I integrate myself back into the workplace? Because as you know, dealing with the public isn't the most easiest thing in the world. So if we owned a restaurant and our folks worked in a restaurant, how are they gonna deal with this disgruntled uh, customer? Um, just, just basic necessities right. and basic ways to live that you and I take for granted on how you deal with a rude waiter or a rude waitress or, or, or just somebody who's who's not really polite. You and I have a, a mechanism that is in us on how to deal with that. Some of our folks have lost that way. So we want to train them in how to get back into that, you know, and just to be hireable. Right. You know? When you see individuals who come to Street Life Ministries at one of your um, dinner nights and one of your, your services, um, are you providing them also with local resources? So if they are homeless but are looking for um, shelter, either permanent or temporary emergency, you've got those resources to point them in the right direction. Or if they are looking for some kind of job training, there is job train or some of the other programs that you aren't doing currently, but they have the ability to go access. Sure, so I'll just tell you a, a really quick story yeah. that, that that falls in line with that. So we had a gentleman who was coming to Street Life Ministries for several years, uh, thought that everything that we talked about was hocus pocus, didn't want to believe in anything that we were talking about, but he felt something in the ministry that he never felt before. And it just felt like he was loved. He was unjudged. We didn't, it doesn't, we're not um, a, a, a faith-based ministry that you have to believe in what we believe in. Right. We just want you to feel loved. So he kept coming to the ministry a few years later, ended up getting caught up for selling drugs, ended up in McGuire. Um, I was the only one that came to visit him in the jail. None of the guys from the street went and visited him. It changed the way he thought right there because right. he saw somebody who wanted to be a brother to him. And when he got out of jail, we connected him to a city team in uh, Oakland where we're, we're, we're partners with city team and uh, Salvation Army, Victory Outreach, all of them. And went through the program, he graduated from the program, he's now an intern there, and they now enrolled him in a drug and alcohol counseling class, so he's gonna become a licensed drug and alcohol uh, counselor. So we're looking, like, how do we help him further along, like, when he gets done with his classes, how do we help him take that license further? But his life has completely changed, and it, it all happened through him coming to the ministry. Right. So how many people would you say you've served over the 11 years that you've been there? Is there, oh my is goodness. there a, a count that you can, can even think about? Or do you think that people, once they're, once they're part of your ministry, they stay, um, even when times are better? Yeah. So we serve an average between 30 to 40,000 meals a year. Um, and that's throughout the whole ministry. And all four nights, we have a, a bingo night, a, a movie night. We have right. different little nights that we do, but it's about forty to 50,000 meals that we serve. Uh, we have a lot of folks that come to the ministry. Uh, they meet my wife or they'll meet myself. My wife uh, is the female lead outreach because we, we keep it separate. Men work with men and women work with women. We deal with a lot of mental illness and a lot of the women that we deal with have been sexually abused. Right. Um, so we, we make sure that we keep our outreach separate. Um, um, you know, for, you know, for other reasons, right. but, um, 
But we have some folks that come and within, within the first time they come, boom, they want to change their life. And then I have got folks that have been coming for the whole time I've been there. Right. So it, it, you never know when the light bulb's going to go on, right. but we're just hopeful that it's going to happen. As long as you're there and the yep. resources are being given to them, you know that they're in a safe place yep. um, for those, those moments that you're meeting with them. Yeah. Well, thank you, Pastor David. Thank you we're, so much. Um, we're out of time, but I thank you so much for sharing the story about Street Life Ministries. And I hope that folks that are watching either um, participate in how they give to your organization, they share in your vision for um, a new home of your own and um, some training ability yes. for um, for your participants and also to, to say thanks to you for cool. your great work. Um, Thank you so much for letting us be here. And enriching our community for sure. <laughs> so anyway, thanks again for, for everything and we'll see all of you next time on Penn Voice.